Hello YouTube! Over the past few days I've been working on a new page in the Heroku app. The idea behind it is to fit each civilization's tech tree onto one easily viewable and printable page. I'll read through the explanation and then go through each civ and give reasons why I ranked them how I did. When this video goes live I'll also have a PDF posted in the Discord of all 36 pages so you can view them or print them. If I make any changes to the, any of the ranks, I'll make sure to keep the PDF updated. So let's get into it. This simplified tech tree helps you to pick out the best units for each stage of the game. It includes all units and upgrades that are relevant to 1v1 Arabia and that each civilization has access to, which aren't shared by all civilizations. All civilizations can research ballistics, chemistry, murder holes, and conscription, so they're not listed. Naval units and bonuses for water are not listed as well. There's also an overview that summarizes bonuses and gives additional insight into how to play each civilization. The rankings are determined by considering the utility of units at each stage of the game. Fully upgraded is A rank. Units increase rank from here based on what bonuses and unique upgrades they have, or decrease rank based on upgrades they're missing. More important upgrades are weighted higher. For example, missing Blast Furnace on Cavalier only reduces the rank by a half stage, whereas missing Plate Barding Armor reduces it by a full rank. A gold background means that the unit is better than generic fully upgraded. A red background means that the unit is particularly bad. The ranking next to the production building is the average of all unit ranks for all ages in that building. Upgrades are weighted based on the unit they're applied to. This means that missing thumb ring for Castle Age Crossbowmen reduces their rank by half a stage, whereas for Cavalry Archers it reduces it by a full stage. Combinations of upgrades missing can decrease the rank by more than the usual values. For example, in Imperial Age, missing Heavy Scorpion reduces their rank by a full stage, and missing Siege Engineers reduces it by only a half stage. Missing both, however, reduces the rank by two stages. Some upgrades have no effect on the ranking, such as Paladin and Siege Onager. Fully upgraded Cavaliers and Onagers still have A rank. This is because these upgrades are not that important in 1v1 Arabia. Sappers also doesn't decrease the ranking of Villagers if it's missing. Since civilization bonuses and technologies are unique to each civilization, they're assessed on a case-by-case -case basis. The same applies for unique units. This leads to rankings that are somewhat subjective. And so here we have the explanations for unclear rankings. There, there's just a few in there. Like, if we go to one of the civilizations, like, you can, you can kind of tell that, you know, we've got all the... Uh, different units here, but it's kind of unclear what the ranking for villager does and what the ranking for defenses is. So, you know, back to the explanation here. The villager one, this is the ranking for how good the civilization's economy is. It also includes bonuses for villager stats themselves, with, um, as with Incas benefiting from blacksmith upgrades and Spanish with supremacy. A good economy bonus increases the rank by a half stage, but an economy bonus that is very situational or not very effective does not increase the rank. And for defenses, this is the overall defensive ability of the civilization. It takes into account their ability to build walls as well as their building upgrades, such as masonry, architecture, and hoardings. Okay, with that out of the way, let's go through it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through each civ. I'll leave timestamps in the description. If you guys want to check it out yourself, just go to the link in the description. But I will explain... Sort of, uh, you know, like, why are Aztecs A+, plus? well, you know, why do they have S, stuff like that. So I, I will be going through each of them for every sieve. So, this should be a long video. <laughs> Alright, let's get into it. So, Aztecs. They have the extra 3 carry capacity on each of their villagers, which definitely gives them A+, plus rank, for sure, in the early game. Um, it sort of drops off in the late game, because plus 3 carry capacity in Imp, it's, it's not really amazing. I mean, it's, it's still a good bonus, but it's not like an A+, plus or anything. They get Garland Wars on their infantry. So, basically, all of their infantry, super, super powerful. And they all get up by an extra half rank, just because their military buildings actually produce 11% faster. Which, where did I, where did I say that? Ah, oh, yeah, there we go. 11 faster military production. So that's for everything except for Siege. So, and since they get Siege Engineers, their Siege is still pretty good. They, they don't have access to the Heavy Scorpion, but it's still going to be a B rank, because you've got Siege Engineers there. You probably don't want to build the unit, but I mean, they're not as bad as they could be. Um, so they're missing Thumb Ring on their Archers, which, I mean, 
It's not the greatest, but they can still get by. Like, their Crossbowman and Castle Age, they're still fine. You don't get Thumb Ring until later on anyways, so uh, it's fine. Like, even if you have them in Imperial Age, you know, they're, they're not the end of the world. They still have Bracer. They still got all that stuff, so it, it's fine. Um, they do lack the final armor upgrade, which is kind of a big deal, but it's it's not that bad. Um, so their skirmishers, usually they would actually lose ranks for losing the final armor upgrade, but they have access to Adlatl, which gives them plus one range and plus one damage. So they, they do get up from there. Um, it's fine. And missing thumb ring on the skirms, it doesn't increase their accuracy by too much. They're already 90% accurate, 90% accurate, so it's fine. Um, their eagles, S rank definitely in the imperial age with garland wars they they're so strong um uh, down to the monks so aztec monks they have access to every single technology and they also get plus five hp on them per technology that you research so they're just super strong um you'll find this with all of the civilizations but the unique unit that's just gonna be completely biased so it's just whatever I think it, they how good they are in Castle and in, in Imperial Age. Because there's not really anything to compare them to. They're unique. So, you know, the, the Jaguar War, you, you probably don't want to go for a castle to build them in Castle Age. They, they're not really worth it. In Imperial Age, they're fine. If you have castles, and they're better than champions, so might as well go for them. Trebuchets. So for all of the civilizations... Any Civ that gets Siege Engineers, you're going to have an A rank. Any Civ that doesn't get Siege Engineers, it's going to be a B plus. And then some Civs, like Tatars, they've got the extra, um, the bonus to them. Like, they have the extra range. So then they're going to get an A plus or an S tier. The Towers. So the Feudal Age one is going to be how good they are at tower rushing and building towers at that stage of the game. So that's what I'm thinking of here. The castle age rank is basically if they have guard tower and they've got well everyone has bodkin arrow then it's going to be an a rank um and then in the late game if they don't have keep or arrow slits you know they get, they lose points there but these guys they do get arrow slits so you know they're just missing keep and then they are missing the defensive upgrades but that's more of in defenses here so as you can see they're missing hoardings they're missing both masonry and architecture um why did i give them oh yeah they have they have fortified walls so they you know they they go from a c to a c plus they're they're not the actual worst all right uh oh yeah and i forgot to mention that the militia in dark age the infantry line here that's gonna have to do with how good their drush is so aztecs they actually start with plus 50 gold which really does help their drush so that that's gonna be an s tier drush for sure um and same with in feudal age generally you don't have men at arms as part of your army but if they have a good men at arms rush then the civilization will get a, a bonus here even though even if it's not really for um for massing the unit like most of the ranks all right on to bulgarians so what have we here they don't really get a bonus for villagers like they get a 50 stone discount on town centers I mean, it's something in Castle Age, but it's not enough to give them an A-plus here. I don't think so. They lack champions, but they do get the Begains technology, which gives them plus five melee armor, which is, is pretty good, I must say. So, they're going to be an A-plus for sure. Um, their archers suck. They don't even get crossbowmen. You know, they get a C-plus just because they do have thumb ring. I mean, it's, it's something. <laughs> but you basically don't want to be building archers as Bulgarians. Um, yeah, nothing to really say about the Halbs anyways, because they're they're just fully upgraded. Um, skirmishers, they lack the final armor on the them, so they, they're just going to be a B. I mean, they build them if you need them, but they're not that great. Uh, cavalry archers, you know what? There's so many civs in this game that have no business building heavy cav archers, but they have access to them. Now, Bulgarians are okay in that they get all of all of the main upgrades, all these four, which you need for them. But they are lacking the final armor upgrade, so you probably don't want them as your units of choice in the Imperial Age. But, you know, if you do have them, they're, they're not bad. They're just not good. So, Bulgarian Hussars. 
They're pretty standard throughout most of the game, but then in the late game, you're generally going to have the stirrups tech. And uh, I do have the techs actually listed here. It is technically a Castle Age tech, but it, it's too expensive to get in Castle Age. You get it on the way up to Imperial Age or in Imperial Age in most situations. So, I'll, you know, we're not going to touch the Castle Age rank because they're basically going to be the same as regular fully upgraded Hussars or Light Cavalry at that stage. But they're definitely S rank in the late game. We've got the Cavaliers. Yeah, they also benefit from stirrups. So, you know, they're going to go up to A+. They do lack the Paladin, so I, I can't really give them S rank. They There are better Paladins. Well, because cause they don't have the Pierce armor, right? Um, okay. So, for the Rams and everything. Why did I give them... Why did I give them A+. Plus? What? What do they get on the... Oh, yeah, because with the new, I forgot, with the new patch that just came out, Blacksmith and Siege Workshop food research costs are reduced by 50%. And, yeah, that's going to help their entire Blacksmith. That's going to make all of their units throughout the game just a little bit easier to tech into, which is great for their Conic, because you need cavalry and infantry upgrades for the Conic. But also for the Siege Workshop, Siege Ram, that's 100 food. Onger, that's 800 food. Siege Onger, what is that? 1,450 food. Um, Heavy Scorpion, another 1,000 food. All these, you're saving so much food. So I had to give them A+. Plus. Even though their Siege itself isn't like a anything special, they have Siege Engineers, they, they get the cheap research costs, which is completely worth it. So you can tech into, like you could even tech into Siege Onger in 1v1s, and it would be it would be okay. So that, that's got to be an A+, plus from me. They're monks, nothing special. You can you can read the monastery tech tree, but I'm not going to go through it because, well, actually, you know what? I, I will say what my ranking system is for the monastery at this point because we're still pretty early on. If they have redemption, then they don't really lose any ranks. Um, but lacking sanctity in Castle Age, it, it's it's pretty bad. You you definitely want sanctity and redemption. I've actually sort of organized them by how useful I think the techs are in most games. So. Um, yeah, block printing, definitely going to be really important, uh, in the Imperial Age, which they lack that as well. So it's just a solid B. Atonement's great in the Castle Age for converting enemy monks. Maybe good on Arena, but I I'm keeping in mind just for 1v1 Arabia, so that it's not as important. Fervor, I, I mean, it's good to have, but you're not going to not build monks if your monks are a bit slower. So it's, it's not that important. Uh, anyways. Bulgarians, they have access to the keep, but they don't have arrow slits, so that's got to be a B. Um, and for their defenses, so it's kind of unusual here. They, they don't have hoardings, they don't have fortified wall, but I'm giving them extra ranks because they have access to the crepost. And being able to just fortify anything with these mini castles, are it, that's just crazy good. So it, it, it's fine that they don't have these other techs. They're still going to be an A+. All right, on to Berbers. They have 10% faster moving villagers, A+. Plus. For sure. Their blacksmith is complete. They're not missing anything from the blacksmith, so they just get fully upgraded champions, no problem. They lack halberdier, so we're just going to call it a B rank in Imperial Age. For the crossbowmen, well, they don't have arbalists, so that's got to be a B and Imp, but they're fine throughout the game. Skirmishers, fully upgraded. Heavy cab archers, they lack the Parthian tactics upgrades. So, yeah, we, we can't really call that anything above a B for them. Hand Cannoneers, they have access to it. Really, the only the only way to lose ranks on Hand Cannoneer is if they lack the final armor upgrade on them, and the only way to gain them is really from unique techs, or gain, gain any ranks. Uh, Berbers have access to the Genitor, so we've got that here. I mean, they're the only ones who get it in 1v1, so they're just going to be A rank for, for the whole thing, because they are as upgraded as they can get here. So Berbers, they have cheaper stable units in Castle Age and beyond. So that gives them an extra rank for all of these. And then in addition to that, they have the um, Maghrabi Camels, which is going to make their Camel Riders regenerate. So that's their S rank Camels for sure. For their Siege, they do have Siege Engineers, but they lack Siege Rams. That's going to be a B+. For the Onagers... 
I'm not reducing the rank by anything if they don't have Siege Onager, because it, it's not something that you normally tech into in 1v1 anyways. Onagers with Siege on uh, Engineers is completely fine, so that's going to be an A rank, and they have Heavy Scorp and Bombard Cannon, so there we go. They're monks. So, we've actually got access to Atonement, which makes them better than the Bulgarians, which, which we had before. So, what Bulgarian Bulgarians didn't have Atonement, Berbers do. So they're going to get a B plus and then a B, because they still lack block printing, which is pretty important. In the Imperial Age, the Camel Archer. So that's that's a pretty good unit. It, it's pretty good in Castle, and it's it's really good in Imperial Age. So that's pretty much any Cavalry Archer type unit, unique unit, is going to be higher ranked, because they're just going to be very useful. So for their Trebuchets, they get access to Casba which they can actually research on the way up to Imperial Age, which makes it so that they can actually win trebuchet battles a lot easier because they can get them out faster. And that's basically why I have them at A plus rank for the trebuchets, just because it's so important to be able to produce them faster. And yeah, I mean, the defenses, maybe I won't even mention these for most of the civs. I've sort of gone over why they would lose ranks, why they would gain ranks, and it's not that interesting. So anyways, we'll, we'll keep it at that for the defenses and towers. On to the next one, Burmese. So we've got the extra attack in each age. That's going to give all of their infantry just A+. Just, they're just a little bit better than standard infantry. They lack thumb ring, so in Castle Age, pretty much their entire um, their entire archer line is pretty bad. They also lack the the second armor upgrade, so it, they're pretty bad. <laughs> but I mean, you can get away with them if you need them. But yeah, you definitely don't want to go for archers as Burmese. But say you opened archers against men at arms or something, you you could probably tech into them and have a serviceable unit but it's it's not like spanish or bulgarians who just don't even get crossbone it's better than that so anyways they get a b and c in the final age for the imperial age um burmese they get mana per cal cavalry so they get the attack bonus against buildings which it's pretty good it's pretty good so that, that's gonna be an a plus for me um oh yeah i didn't mention they do get the lumber upgrades for free uh it's it's not good enough to increase the rank of the villagers i would say for this but it, it is good for the siege we do have siege engineers so it's just going to be standard it's basically just like the bulgarians uh or sorry the berbers with the just kind of everything there just with siege engineers nothing too special their monks are great they have access to everything except heresy doesn't really matter but yeah, um, their monastery technologies are 50% cheaper as well. So that's going to bring them up to an A+, plus because it, it's just so easy to tech into them. You can get redemption for half price. That's awesome. You can get um, yeah, block printing for half price. All this stuff. So, yeah, it's good. The Arambi. Uh, it, it's a solid A in both ages. Like, they're, they're great. They're not like they're not like a Mangadai or anything like that, but they're, they're a good unit. And Trebuchets, yeah, of course, they have the Siege Engineers. Okay, so... On to Britons. So their, their villagers are a little bit different. We've got the sheep bonus in Dark Age, and then we've got the cheap town centers in Castle Age. Definitely enough to give them an A+, plus in those two ages. Fully upgraded champions, fully upgraded halberdiers. They have faster working ranges with extra range on the, um, the crossbone, but they lack the thumb ring. So, you know, they're not quite S rank in Castle Age, just because they have the extra range, but they lack the firing speed and the accuracy. But then in S rank, having just so much extra range is definitely going to be an S tier. For the Skirmishers, they actually do benefit from Yeoman, the, um, the unique tech, which, did I even write it here? Uh, anyways... I didn't write it here, but they do benefit from the extra range. So they, they're going to be an A-plus tier for sure, because they're fully upgraded. Cavalry archers, yeah, they're, they're kind of bad. Their cavalry is just bad in general, because they're lacking bloodlines. They do have husbandry, though, so, you know, they're not absolute trash, but, yeah, they're, they're pretty bad. Anything that lacks bloodlines is going to be pretty much a B rank, unless they have a, another bonus somewhere else. 
For the Siege, it's all just Siege Engineers, Monks, nothing special, but they do have block printing in the late game, so let's, we up that to a V+, plus. it's okay. So Longbowmen, they are not worth it in Castle Age, generally. They, they basically do one extra damage is it but they fire a bit slower or something or no they have less accuracy or something they're they're just kind of worse than crossbowmen and you need a castle for them but in the final age they they're definitely s tier they're they're better um yeah and then with britons access to the keep the yeoman technology also affects keeps so that that's why they're a plus there okay on a byzantines my personal favorite we have no ecotex that's okay we're missing blast furnace in the final age so that's gonna be a b rank there but it's fine um actually maybe maybe i should have made that a b plus because blast furnace is not the end of the world lacking that i, I think i'll change that actually b plus because i think some of the later civs that lack it also got a b plus anyways we've got super cheap halberdiers that's that's amazing like of course we're lacking blast furnace so they're only going to be a plus in the final age but they're they're great throughout the mid game um same with their skirmishers but they're fully upgraded in the late game so they get that um s rank fully upgraded arbalists nothing special about them though cavalry archers suck because no bloodlines and no parthian tactics but this is what i'm saying why do so many civs have access to heavy cab archer but the horrible upgrades on them i don't know whatever they have hand cannoneers and they they've just kind of got a pretty pretty bad hussars pretty bad paladins but having the cheap he um camels is really really good so lacking bloodlines in castle age it's not a big deal when they're up against knights they they still do the job and they do do the job well with the extra um or the extra discount on them in the final age it's gonna have to be just an a rank though because they are missing the blast furnace and bloodlines and even though they get them cheaper it's they're still not uh they're not really top tier for the siege we've got siege ram but we don't have siege engineers so it's going to be a b plus um any onager that doesn't get siege engineers is going to be a b they're still fine but they're they're not as good without siege on or siege engineers and then the scorpion with no upgrades it's it's not good in imperial age Bombard cannons without siege engineers, that's a B. Um, it, basically, that, that's the only upgrade that really affects Bombard cannons, so it's either B or A, unless there's a unique tech involved. For the monks, they have full upgrades, but they don't really have anything special on them, so it's it's just an A. I mean, they, they don't have herbal medicine, but it doesn't matter for them. <laughs> uh, okay, Cataphract, yeah, it pains me to admit, but they're not that great in Castle Age. In the Final Age, they're decent, though. It's not a unit that you'd want to go for every game, but in certain situations, they're great. And then, of course, Byzantine, they have extra HP on their buildings, so that, that's going to be an A-plus for their, um, for the towers, and then A-plus for defenses, for sure. Like, they don't really have anything special other than that, and then, um, yeah, it's just HP. It's not anything too, too crazy, but it's an A-plus. It's not an S, though. Okay, Celts. So, we've got the faster chopping villagers, uh, but they lack the final upgrade for wood in the final age, so it's just going to be their standard in the last age, but they're amazing throughout the most of the game. They have faster moving infantry starting in feudal age after the last patch, so A+, plus across the board. They got full upgrades on them as well. Their archers kind of suck, though. They're, la they're lacking the final armor and the final attack upgrades which also gives range so so the thing with bracer is that it gives attack but also range and the range is the really important thing or well it, it's probably more important than the attack so in feudal age pr pretty much every archer in feudal age is, actually yeah every archer in feudal age and skirmisher they're gonna be fully upgraded because there's no civ that lacks fletching and the first upgrade a every civ has the first blacksmith upgrade so those are the only upgrades I'm taking into account. But then they drop off pretty hard. Like, actually, in Castle Age, the skirmishers are basically fully upgraded. They lack Thumb Ring, but it's not a big deal. Um, but yeah, as you can see, they're, they're kind of bad. Same with the stable. You don't really want to be building stable either as Celts. They're, they're really a pure infantry and siege civilization. 
So down to siege though. You can see they got the they have the mysterious X tier. That's when you have S tier in every single unit in a building. It goes to X tier. So that means like yeah, you, you need to build siege with Celts. That's just that's what they do. They just have fully upgraded siege. They also siege workshops work 20% faster. Siege workshop units fire 25% faster. Their their faster cutting lumberjacks also help that cuz siege is pretty wood heavy. They have Fuhrer Celtica, which uh, basically gives them a ton more HP. So, yeah, they have a ton of upgrades on the Siege. Completely worth it to build them all the time. Their monks are kind of bad. They, they have Sanctity, which, eh, it's, it's fine. <laughs> I guess if you're converting knights, it's you can get away with it in Castle Age. But in Imp, you really don't want to build them. Uh, except to collect relics, of course. Woad Raiders. They're not great in Castle Age, but they're amazing in Imperial Age. That's all I can really say about that. And yeah, nothing special on the bottom. So, let's go on to the next one. Cumans! Okay, so they can build a town center in Feudal Age. So we've got an S tier for Feudal Age, for sure, from them. But other than that, I mean, they, they don't really have any other bonuses for economy. It's really just that Feudal TC is insane. So th they have to get an S rank there. For the infantry, they have full upgrades, but they lack supplies for the champion. So that's going to be B+. Plus. Um, wait, why do they... Okay, uh, this is... Am I giving Bs to those? I can't remember. Anyways, I, I might change this to a B if it's lacking supplies in the late game. See, the thing is, is I made all the civilizations. It took me like 20 to 30 minutes per civ. So I did it over the course of like four days. So by the end of it, I was like, okay, I, I can't quite remember what I'm ranking here. So there, there's going to be some inconsistencies, which I'm going to fix before this video goes up. Okay. Crossbowmen. They're fine in both these ages. They even have thumb ring. So they're, they're fine to build up to castle age, but they're garbage in imperial age. Um, they, they just lack Bracer. It's, it's really something that you can't get by with. Lacking Bracer and lacking Arbalist, not going to be a good time. Lacking Bracer for the Skirmishers, not great, but they're serviceable. And the Heavy Cavy Archers, so they're okay. I mean, they're, I still gave them an A rank here just because they are faster. So with Kumin's they actually move 15% faster in the Imperial Age. Did I actually list that here? Uh, I, I just said faster moving cavalry. Um, yeah. I, oh, yeah. In Feudal and Imperial Age. Because in, in Castle Age, they lack husbandry, but they basically have it for free in Castle Age. Um, so Imperial Age, you know, uh, otherwise they would be probably like a B. Maybe they should be a B plus. But it, it's it's okay. They, they still move faster, which they're just going to have different utility. Like, you're not going to have them as part of your main army, most likely, without Bracer. Uh, you'd rather have the Kipchak anyways, which is down here. But let's go through it. So, with the Hussars, A+, plus because they move faster. So, that's, that's it. But in the final age, we actually have Step Husbandry to train them super, super quickly, as well as the movement speed. So, those two things combined... Even though the unit themselves is just fully upgraded, well, other than the extra movement speed, you can train them super, super fast. They're s rank Hussars, because in the super late game, it's all about just flooding them. And if you can just flood them from less stables, it's it's a huge bonus. Their Paladins, fully upgraded with the extra movement speed, so A+. They lack Heavy Camel Rider. They're the only Civ that lacks Heavy Camel Rider if they get Camel Riders, so... It's a, it's a B plus. They, I mean, they're still okay, but they're not really something you want to build in the late game. Uh, you have fully upgraded halberdiers anyways, so you don't really need the camels in Imperial Age. The Step Lancers. So, they also benefit from Step Husbandry, being able to train them super, super quick. So, that's going to be an A plus for me. So, Cumans. They can build rams in Feudal Age. We've got the S rank because they're the only one who even builds them in Feudal Age, so that's that's amazing. They're also the only Civ that gets capped Ram in Castle Age, which is just so much better than Battering Ram. So they gotta be ST here, tier here, but they lack Siege Engineers for Imperial Age, so they actually go right down to a B+. 
Um, for the Siege Andre, they get Siege Andre, but no Siege Engineers. It's going to be a B plus. I mean, you probably don't want to tech into Siege Onagers, but I gave them a B plus instead of a B because they actually get Siege Onager. Scorpions, yeah, they they're kind of standard A and then C. It's, it's not great. Their monks are nothing special. Kip checks are great though. So they did just recently increase the frame delay on them to be the same as the Mangadai, but they still should be A plus tier. I, I think they're still going to be really good. Um, and oh yeah, so for defenses, they're they are a little bit special here in that they have extra HP on Palisade walls, fifty plus or plus fifty percent hit points exactly. Um, so that's going to help them in Dark and Feudal Age, but then they lack Stone Wall, so. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they're kind of B-rank in the late game. And also, they only have masonry. So, yeah, the defenses are not great in the late game, but awesome in the early game. On to Chinese. So, we've got... we. we oh, yeah, so we start with the extra three villagers in Dark Age. That's A-plus for their economy. This is sort of like villagers and economy mixed in here. Uh, it's fine. It's It's not too confusing. Uh, so, yeah, they, the Chinese, they just lack supplies. Yeah, okay, maybe I am giving them B+, plus for lacking supplies in Imperial Age. We'll see, we'll see. It's either going to be a B or a B+, plus, um, because lacking supplies is pretty big if you're trying to spam them in the late game. But other than that, I mean, they are fully upgraded, so it's, it's not really the end of the world if you have to build champions as Chinese. Fully upgraded helps, fully upgraded Arbalists. Fully upgraded skirmishers, and oh yeah, they also, every single tech that Chinese makes is discounted. So they get a better discount um, the later age that they're in. So, yeah, that's pretty sweet. You can tech into anything. And they've got a ton of A tiers, as you can see. Tons of A's, so they can basically do anything, and they can afford to do, or they can afford to tech switch a lot because of their cheap technologies. Cav archers, they're missing Parthian tactics, so they lose a rank here. For the um, the cavalry, they, they don't have Hussar, so they gotta be a B plus. Hussars, they're they're a bit better than light calves, so they reduce the rank there. They don't have siege engineers, so their siege is only okay, except for that they get access to the rocketry tech, which is gonna give a little bit extra damage, well, a lot extra damage to heavy scorpions. So they gotta be A plus, even though they don't have the siege engineers, because range on the scorpions and extra damage to building it's not as important to scorpions as it is to onagers uh their their monks they they don't have redemption which is good <laughs> they would be op with redemption monks um so they're just gonna be a solid b b plus chukanu they're, they're okay in castle age they're not great it's not really something that you want to go for usually but they're, they're not bad they're totally S rank in the final age, though. If basically Chukunu are the core of the Chinese army, especially with rocketry. Um, they get really good keeps as well. They just have full upgrades on them um, and great wall. It gives them a little bit more HP, which is really nice. So that that's what they get for the defenses as well. But they are lacking hoardings for their castles, and they're gonna have a lot of castles because they want to produce Chukunu. So lacking hoardings, it, it kind of hurts them. So, anyways, Ethiopians. So, we have a really solid men at arms rush. That that's why they're A plus here is because they're really solid. They get the extra hundred food, hundred gold when they research or when they reach the next age. So, if you've got some men at arms and you go for archers with that or towers, it's a pretty good strategy. So they they gotta be an A plus for the men at arms in feudal age. Even though it doesn't really help them spam the men at arms, it, they're fine. Um, they, they have supplies, which is kind of weird, but they don't have champion, which uh, it's got to be a B rank, even though they get all the other upgrades, missing champions, a huge one. Their archer line fires. Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, let's talk about the halberdier. So they, they get the free pikeman upgrade, which it, it doesn't help them again. It doesn't help them spam them, but in early castle age, you can just throw in some, um, pikes against cavalry to support your crossbowmen, which you're going to be building. So that that's going to be a plus for the pikemen there. For the archers, they fire 18% faster. So a plus across the board. They're just super super strong. Um, they they don't get any sort of bonus for them other than that. But that bonus alone, it, it carries them. Skirmishers fully upgraded. 
Heavy Cav Archers, uh, yeah, missing Bloodlines and Parthian Tactics, so they're going to be bad again. That's kind of why Heavy Cav Archers are just notoriously bad, because there's so many civs that just, they get them, but they're just bad. <laughs> Uh, their cavalry, their cavalry is pretty bad because they do lack plate, um, plate barding armor and bloodlines. So you, you don't, Jeff, you generally don't want to be building Ethiopian, uh, cavalry. Wait, why did I, why did I give them B plus for these? Th those should probably be a B. I would, uh, oh no, it's, they're just missing bloodlines in Castle Age. So they're, they're serviceable, I guess. They're just not good. Uh, no, they should probably be, be, be a B, because that's what I did for Byzantines. All right, th these are going to be a B. Uh, okay. They have very, very good Siege in the late game. They're basically standard in Castle Age, just like every Civ, but then they get the Torsion Engines, which uh, that gives them a little bit more Blast Radius on their units. So it, it affects Rams. Eh, you know, it's not great on the Rams. It's like usually you're just attacking a single target with them. Although, of course, y you can get in and attack multiple targets, but it's more useful for the Siege Onagers and the Heavy Scorpions, where you're actually attacking closely packed units. Uh, it, it affects the Bombard Cannons as well, but again, Bombard Cannons generally not going to be targeting units as much. They, they are used like that, but it's not as big of an effect as the Scorpions and the Siege Onager. Nothing special about the monks, the Shotel warrior. They just got a recent resource buff, so so like they cost five less gold. We'll see how that plays out. They're they're okay, but they're nothing special, so they're gonna be B and A rank. Uh, yeah, okay. Let's go on to the Franks. This is this is the most new friendly civ there is. Great civ. Um, so they have the faster foragers in Dark Age. And then in Feudal Age and Castle Age, they have the free farm techs. So they get free horse collar and free, um, sorry, heavy plow. In Feudal Age, you're also collecting berries still. So it's still, like, horse collar's not as big of a tech, but with the faster collecting berries throughout Feudal Age as well, it's still going to be A+, plus in the first three ages, for sure. Their um, Drush and their Man-at-Arms really benefit from these food upgrades so they're just going to be an a plus there's nothing special about them other than that their food economy is really good also their scout rush is super good because of the food but also because they get 20 percent more hit points on their cavalry so with bloodlines a scout actually has 65 hp whereas with the franks bonus they only have 54 i believe but the franks get it for free so they're, they're going to be an a plus for sure because you're not getting bloodlines at the start of feudal age anyways so Whatever. We have fully upgraded halbs. Their, their archers are just bad. I won't go through it, but they're just bad. I, I basically, on all the other civs before this, I've sort of gone through what, what makes them bad and what the rating system is. They're just bad. You can you can read the um, upgrades for yourself here. I'll just go over what's good from here on. Uh, so yeah. Their, their light cap is actually kind of worse than normal in the late game, but they're still going to be an A rank. They don't have to research the Bloodlines upgrade. Um, maybe maybe it should be a B plus, but they're still pretty good. Oh, no. Yeah, it's because they get Chivalry, faster working stables. So it's definitely an A rank. Like, they, they can produce them super quickly. So it's fine. Their Paladins are great. The Frankish Paladins are notoriously just one of the best Paladins of the game. They get the extra HP, which helps a lot. And then with Chivalry, you can spam them super, super quick. They're great in Castle Age just because they get the free HP. There's not really anything special, but they get the free HP, which makes them A-plus for sure. And then, of course, their their food economy is great with the free heavy plow, so it really helps you get them out. The Siege. They have Siege Engineers. No Siege on... Or no Siege Ram, so that's basically it. Monks, nothing special. Elite Throwing Axemen. Yeah, Throwing Axemen, they're, they're pretty situational. They're not something that you go for, really um it, like every game so yeah b and a okay on the goths well there's not really an eco bonus that's worth mentioning but yeah their infantry that's that's an x tier barracks right there they they can do pretty much they can just spam infantry that's that's all they need to do because they have the huskerel which tanks arrows so that's it's just 
It's so good. In the late game, they just spam the three E infantry types, and they have basically an answer to everything. Um, yeah, that's that's basically Goths in a nutshell. They they lack the final armor upgrade on them, but that doesn't stop them from being S tier just across the board. Uh, I think I have it written here. They they have twenty percent faster producing. They get a discount on infantry, which increases each age. Um, oh yeah, and then they get basically arson for free, but even a better version that does one more damage in Imperial Age. They have the Anarchy technology, which helps Huskrolls, or it makes the Huskrolls be able to be trained in the barracks. And they have a faster producing barracks. Oh yeah, I said that. But then they, they get a tech, Perfusion, which makes the barracks work 100% faster. So... Basically, their entire Civ bonuses, they, they are all just to make the barracks even better. So, honestly, like, these things would be S++++. Like, they're, they're just crazy. They also get the 10 extra population space in Imperial Age, so you can actually just have more infantry. That's basically all they are. Like, they don't really do anything else. They don't have Siege Engineers. So, you just spam infantry with them, really. But they actually do have Bloodlines and Husbandry, so, I mean, their, their cavalry is, it's okay in Castle Age. It's not bad. You generally don't want to go for them, but you can if you want. Um, yeah, monks are trash. Defenses are trash. Yeah, they, they're the other Civ that doesn't have Stonewall, along with Cumans. So, yeah, they can't really wall anything. Okay, Huns. So, we have... Uh, oh, yeah, they don't need to build houses, which I was debating whether to give them an extra like an A+, plus, but I don't think it's... It, it's good, but it's not crazy, crazy good. So it, they're just going to be A for Pillager. Um, they get garbage two-handed swordsmen in the late game. Like, they're, they're just bad. No supplies, no final armor upgrade, no bueno. So, Halberdiers... Uh, wait a sec. Okay, the, the Halberdiers need to be downgraded to B+. Plus. They're missing... Actually, probably even a B with the plate mail missing. So I'll, I'll do that later. Uh, crossbowmen, they don't have Arbalist, and they don't have the final armor upgrade. So that's pretty bad. Final armor upgrade matters a lot for skirmishers, so that's a full rank for missing that. They, they have cheaper heavy cav archers, though, or cav archers starting in the um, Castle Age, and then they get even cheaper in the Imperial Age. 10% and then 20%. So, even though they're lacking the final armor upgrade, they're, they're okay. They're not bad. I mean, the archers, they're... You're, you're supposed to have them bef behind your meat shield, so you, you don't really want to engage as much with them anyway. So, missing the armor, it's, it's not the end of the world. It's fine. Um, the hussars, so yeah, A-plus rank, for sure. Um, their stables work extra fast, so you, you can just spam them. It's, it's super, super good. Uh, and then having the the free houses, you, you don't need to actually um, worry about that, so you don't really get housed, which which kind of helps. Um, actually, they're they're probably not an A plus rank in feudal age, though. I don't know why I had I, I like I mean their stables work well. Yeah, I I think I can argue for it though, because if you're actually going scouts, just having Having like four scouts or five scouts when your opponent has four scouts, that it's a pretty big difference. So yeah, they're gonna be A plus for just their entire stable. Siege, not very good. It's whatever. They don't have the man they don't even have onagers, um, which is the same as Turks. They just only have mangonels and it's pretty bad. You don't wanna be building siege with Huns if you can help it. They get the Tarkin, which sort of fills that siege unit role. It's just you have to get a lot of upgrades on it, and basically, the Paladin is generally the better option. The Tarkin attacks a little bit slower, and they do less damage, so... Yeah, they, they have an extra Pierce Armor compared to the Paladin, which is good, but other than that... Yeah, they're, they're, they're maybe good to raid with, but they're not something as you that you want as the core of your army, usually. Okay, Incas. They get they benefit from blacksmith upgrades on their villagers that's why they're a plus they don't really get a eco bonus um other than their buildings costing less stone which is it's whatever but ha just having super super tanky villagers it just helps them not lose them from um to raids throughout the entire game which, which is it's just great their drush they they start or they're they're 
houses provide extra population and they also get a free llama which does help you get out that drush so it, it's it's okay i mean it's not like it's not a huge bonus but i think it's worth it to say they, they got an a plus drush they're they're good to drush with um especially because you can turn them into men at arms if you're going for a tower rush like men at arms towers that can be good i didn't give them an a plus for the men at arms but it, i think that they deserve the a plus here maybe just barely um yeah so th they're also missing wait are they missing uh i guess they must be i i took the tech tree data right from the aoe fandom I guess they're missing the final armor. Oh, yeah, it's because they get they get fabric shields. That's why. Oh, I think I have it bugged. It, it says that they don't get it here, or at least it's like, um, it's dark. Uh oh, I know what I did. It's it's because I went into the game and I think I I took the image from there, but I didn't have it researched. Okay, well I can fix that. Anyways. The, yeah, they're Eagle Warriors. They they get the Fabric Shields, which give them a little bit extra um, armor in the late game. They just have full upgrades. Fabric Shields affects the Slinger and the Elite Skirmisher as well, so they're going to be A-plus in the late game. They have Siege Engineers, which is going to help for their entire Siege. And then Kamiyuks, they're not that great in Castle Age, but once you can get full upgrades for them, they're, they're crazy good. The Incas, they get... A plus in their towers because they get buildings costing 15% less stone, which really, really helps get them out. Uh, especially, like, you might not be going for Kamiyooks every game, so you, you could build keep defense if you really wanted to. They have arrow slits, they have full upgrades on them, and then they have them cheaper, so it's not a bad idea. Alright, on to Indians. So, we have cheaper villagers the entire game. There we go, A plus tier. We've got nothing really special in the blacksmith. We're actually missing the armor upgrades for both these because they just recently removed plate barding armor from them and just gave them extra pierce armor in, in Castle and Imperial Age. So they end up having basically one less, no, two less. They, they, they lose a melee armor and they lose a pierce armor on their Imperial Camels, which is, it's pretty bad. So it really only buffs the light cavalry in castle age which is not really a unit you go for anyways that's not supposed to come up um so we've got we're, we're lacking arbalist heavy cav archers are okay they get full upgrades so you, you technically could go for them here they don't get anything special on them though they get the extra range on the hand cannoneers and like I said, they get the free Pierce armor, which it's kind of nice, but it's not the greatest, actually. Um, maybe they should only be A tier here, because they're actually just missing a melee armor from that. That's that's kind of a nerf, actually. Yeah, because they don't really have anything else. Alright, that's going to be an A tier for sure. The Camel Rider, it's still a good unit, though. So we're still going to consider that to be an A-plus tier. There's Siege. They get Siege Engineers, but no Siege Ram, no Heavy Scorp. And Monks, nothing... Like, they're okay. They're okay. They're just lacking Atonement. Uh, and that's going to bring them down to a B-plus instead of an A. But they're, they're still good in most situations. Elephant Archer, if you can find a use for them, great. Otherwise... Basically, in Castle Age, they're going to be B-plus for me just because they have three base pierce armor. So they can they can repel enemy crossbone, and that's that's like the only use I can think of. In the late game, I mean, if you can if you can mass up them, or mass them up, they're not bad, but you're, you're probably not going to get to that point. Okay, Italians. They advance to the next age at a 15% discount. It's great. I didn't include it here, but um, it, it does help throughout the game. They also have um, a tech that gives them an extra melee and an extra pierce armor on their archers here. So that's really nice. That's going to bring them up to an A plus tier. Uh, did they get anything else for them? I don't think they got anything else. It's really, it's really just that. Um, but they, they do have like everything fairly well upgraded because they have a full blacksmith 
Uh, oh yeah. So the skirmishers are also affected by Pavis. So that's why they're A plus. And it's not a super expensive upgrade, so you can reasonably get it in Castle Age, which is why I've included it here. Um actually with the Genoese crossbowman buff, now that they train faster, that they might be A plus in Castle Age, because the thing is is that Italians they don't have Halberdier. So their only anti-cavalry, they also don't have um, camels. So their only anti-cavalry is the elite Genoese crossbowmen, which they do have an attack bonus for cavalry. So I think you pretty much have to go for these. You, you, go, you can open monks against knights, but you pretty much have to tech into these things eventually. So that they might be A+, plus actually, in Castle Age. They have hand cannoneers and bombard cannons, 20% cheaper, A+, plus for sure. Being able to spam those units in the late game. Oh, I forgot to, I forgot about the Condo Tiero. It's just a good unit to have in early imp if you don't have champions upgraded into. It's like you can spam a, an Imperial Age infantry unit and you don't really need to spend too much into upgrades. So it's just kind of good to have if you don't want to invest all the upgrades in champions. Um, obviously, yeah, it, it resists gunpowder as well, but you can just use it as you would use champions for the most part. Uh, okay. They're stable. Just full upgrades. Nothing too special. They are lacking siege engineers, so, you know, standard ratings here. They have pretty much everything useful in the monastery. They don't have heresy, but it doesn't really matter for them. So, they're gonna be A rank. And, yeah, that's, that's basically it for them. Japanese! So, they have the 50% cheaper economic buildings, which is nice. I, I didn't include it in an, a rank up or anything for the villagers, but it is actually really good in the early game. You save quite a bit of wood, but um, it's, it does help you get out certain units. So, especially like their men-at-arms. Their infantry attack 33% faster starting in Feudal Age as well, which means all these infantry, crazy good. Just, just crazy good. So, yeah, they're, they're going to be right there. They're fully upgraded as well. So, yeah. Maybe even S tier in the late game. Because you don't really mass infantry in the mid game, but in the, in the late game, I, I think I'm going to change them to S tier in the late game because they're so good. Maybe even the... Well, the samurai is not as good because you have to get castles for them, but here, I'll, I'll get to that later. They get fully upgraded everything in the archery range. Nothing special, but... They don't lack anything, which is awesome. They are lacking the final armor upgrade for cavalry, so that's going to bring their late game stable down a little bit. They have siege engineers, so their their siege is pretty good. It's decent. They get onager, capped ram. You know, the thing is, is with the siege ram, it gives you extra HP, which is the, that's the big difference. Yeah, of course they do more damage, but the extra HP helps tank arrows, which that's why it's so important to have. Uh, they're monks. They're not. They're again. They're just missing heresy. So it's whatever. It's they're fine. The samurai. You generally are not going to build a castle so that you can get samurai in Castle Age. In the late game, they can be strong. They can be really good. It's just that you you have to spend all your stone on castles. And why do that when you can go Yasuma towers, which are a little bit more effective actually. So their keeps are really really strong with the Yasuma tech. Uh, oh, they have Karapuruto as well, which actually that's going to bring their trebuchets to an A+. That's that's a mistake. I need to... I'll change that as well. Okay. Khmer. They have a few bonuses for their villagers. They don't need a drop-off point for their farmers. So that's going to bring them up a little bit, but it is balanced by making them a little bit slower. But just having the food as they collect it, it it's a good bonus. And then they can also garrison in houses so you can save them. So it's going to be A+, plus for sure, for their villagers. They get some of the worst two-handed swordsmen in the game. C rank. <laughs> no supplies, no squires, no final armor upgrade. Yeah, their infantry suck. If, if you have to, you can build halberdiers, but they're, they're not great. <laughs> um, unfortunately, you do have to build them sometimes because you, you don't have camels with Khmer, so... What are you going to do against cavalry? you got to build these bad halberdiers sometimes. Anyways, they lack thumb ring. So they're arborless, 
are not great. So we're, we're off to a pretty rocky start with Khmer. They, they do have fully upgraded uh, skirms. Like, I'm not going to um, dock them any points for thumbring, missing thumbring on skirms. It's, it's not a big issue. Uh, oh, yeah, I forgot to mention another reason why they're A plus for economy is that they don't require prerequisite buildings to build any building or advance to the next age. So they can just go up any time. Like, they don't even need to build a barracks in Dark Age um, to get, like, a stable. Uh, um, which can lead to them not having access to spearmen, but it's fine. You, you save so much wood early on. Okay, they're stable. We've got just a full stable, and then... The Khmer Battle Elephants, they're really, really good. They move 10% faster, and then they get Tux, Tusk Swords as well to do 3 extra damage. So they're S rank. They're they're probably the best elephant in the game, if you can get to them. Or, or Battle Elephant, I mean. Okay, so they're Siege. They have Siege Engineers, and then they also have this tech called Double Crossbow, which makes the Scorpions fire two projectiles which that's that's huge so they're going to be s tier in the um in the imperial age and because they actually have plus one range in, in castle age and in imperial age so, so it's it's just plus one overall so they get eight range they're going to be s or uh a plus rank for the extra range that so they can actually fight britain crossbowmen in the castle age with the eight range which is really nice um, and they outrange other crossbowmen, and they outrange enemy mangonels as well, which means that they can actually take out mangonels if they, they shoot and run. So it's, it's pretty good. Nothing special about the monks, really. They have redemption, at least. Bliss elephants, again, just like the Indian elephant archers, I didn't really know where to put them. They're just going to be B+. Plus. It's like, they're st they still have three pierce armor as the base, so that they can repel enemy crossbowmen, but you, you already have the super good scorps for that, so... Yeah, they're just going to be B+. Plus. Like, they're not great. Um, yeah. Okay. Koreans. Another Civ that just got a whole bunch of buffs. They, they just keep getting stronger with every patch. So, nothing special about the villagers. Their villagers do collect stone a little bit faster, but it doesn't really matter enough. Um, oh, yeah. They also have plus three line of sight. But still, they're still just A rank. It's It's not amazing. They are lacking Blast Furnace, so that's going to be a B plus for the Champion line. For the Pike line, they they have cheaper Pikes because um, all of their wood cost is reduced by 20% on all units, except Siege. So, yeah, that, that's great throughout the mid-game. Lacking Blast Furnace kind of makes them not as good against things that aren't cavalry in the late game, which, yeah, you will be trying to kill enemy halberdiers or enemy skirmishers with them, so lacking Blast Furnace kind of hurts them there. They're Arbalists, so they actually have free archer upgrades these days, or free armor archer upgrades, in addition to the wood cost reduction. So, we're going to be A+, plus for sure. That, that's the same reasoning for the skirmishers. Heavy Cav Archers, they're missing Bloodlines and Parthian Tactics, so get out of here, Heavy Cav Archer. Not a very good stable. Missing Bloodlines, it really hurts them. And then missing both Imperial Age Techs, they're, they're pretty bad. But they still get Hussar, and they can still raid Villagers, so... Because they have Husbandry. Honestly, Husbandry, that's all you need on your scouts in the late game. Just, just get in there. Obviously, the armor helps, but yeah, for raiding Villagers, they, they are still fine they're not great though actually uh, they're not even just not great they're pretty bad but they still do the job okay they're siege onagers so they get this technology called shinkchon and that gives them an extra range so basically once you get siege engineers you have 10 range on these things uh yeah they are they're amazing they're basically like it's really difficult to kill these things unless you have bombard cannons um yeah especially because the koreans are going to be going halberdiers as well to protect the siege and they also have amazing s rank keeps because they get well the 20 percent faster stone miners they get all of the keep upgrades for free um and then they can research uh yip song which they, they used to get this for free, by the way, but 
Now they, they research that in, and they can get it in Castle Age and it gives them plus two range on the keeps. So imagine having Siege Onagers with 10 range and then you've got these keeps in the late game with, what are they, what are they 12 range? I think they're 12 range. You're not going to get killed by anything. Um, even Bombard Cannons, Bombard Cannons have base 12 range. So civs that have Bombard Cannons but no Siege Engineers can't even kill Yupsong keeps from Koreans. So basically you're only vulnerable to Siege Engineer Bombard Cannons and Trebuchets. Which if you have an answer to that, well, I mean, you can, you can still kill them with the Siege Onagers. It's really just the Trebuchets you have to worry about. And you can build your own trebuchets for that, too. <laughs> so anyways, Koreans are the best turtling civilization, as I've put right there. Their war wagon, it's actually decent. It's not bad. It's a still a cavalry archer unit, and it's its actually really tanky. Uh, that's going to be an A+. Plus. They get the, the wood discount. I mean, it's a unique unit, so it's like they're the only ones who get it. But uh, yeah, they're, they're a decent unit. Again, it's just B plus in the Castle Age because it's not something you really go for that because they're kind of expensive. But in the late game, awesome unit. But you might want to be spending your stone on keeps because they're so strong. Although um, they're not, they don't really do any extra damage though. It's just range. So if, unless you have a bunch of them in one place, they're not really as useful. So you do still want to be building castles to take map control. Okay, Lithuanians. So they start with the extra 150 food. It's not enough to warrant like an extra boost here. Maybe I could have given them an A plus for their drush because of it. Maybe I'll change that because you can you can do like an instant drush because the extra food just really helps you afford those. But their infantry, they're lacking supplies and the final armor upgrade. So they become progressively worse as the game goes on. The halberdiers, they move faster. So, so Lithuanian halberdiers and skirmishers move faster, which is just a huge bonus. You can close the distance. You, like, you can catch cavalry a lot easier. It, it's just good. Movement speed is crazy good in this game. So A plus for all of those. Now they get S rank in the skirmishers because they have access to tower shields, which gives them extra pierce armor on them, which... Yeah, it brings them up to 10 pierce armor, which means they only take one damage from Arbalus even, um, and, and like Arbalus and even the stronger unique units, um, like the Rattan Archers, with, with full upgrades. So it's crazy good. But yeah, they don't have Arbalus, so it's just going to be a B rank for them. Cav Archers are just, I mean, they're fine, but they're lacking Parthian tactics, so not great. The Lithuanian stable is really good, though. They get full upgrades on the Hussar, and then for every relic they collect, they get a plus one attack on their Nightline, which, it, it like, other than that, they don't have anything, but that could be really, really good. If you can get two relics, even, in the Castle Age, it's like you have Iron Casting for free. So, A plus rank. Like, they're not... They're not, like... Hmm... Maybe it should be S rank in the late game. Well, it's kind of dependent on if you get the relics, though. So I, I think I can safely keep it at A. Uh, like, they're they're between A and S tier, <laughs> basically, uh, depending on the game. So I, I, it can be A+. plus. It's fine. Uh, Siege is really nothing special. Monks. Their monks are great. So they have 20% faster working monasteries. So they can get the monks out faster so that they can collect more relics at the same time. Um, and yeah, they have access to every monastery technology. They're great. The Lightus. So this unit is super strong. It just got a nerf to its pierce armor. So it just lost one pierce armor, which is going to change how it works. I think it's still going to be a really good unit, but it's more against melee units. And then they've got the paladin for pierce armor units. So if they're up against a cavalry sieve, they're going to want Lightus. If they're up against a archer sieve, they're going to want Paladin. And you just have to choose the right unit to tech into. Of course, you need castles for them, so they're, they're kind of harder to get out, but it's fine. Their trebuchets... Uh, oh, they're lacking siege engine. It should be a B plus. I'm going to be changing that. That's a mistake on my part. Unless I'm missing something. Nope. Yeah, it's, it's fine. They have access to the hill forts, which gives the town centers extra range, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. 
which I mean, it gives them a plus here in Castle Age. You're probably not going to research that, but it's it's available, so it, it makes it slightly better. Magyars. So yeah, they 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 actually have zero economic bonuses, as I said here, but they do have access to a lot of uh, good things in their tech tree. Except their infantry. Their infantry is kind of lackluster. We've got no squires and no final armor upgrade. It's pretty bad. But they're archers. So they get fully upgraded arbalists and skirmishers. They're heavy cav archers. In the late game, they have access to this unique technology, the recurve bow, which gives them an extra range and an extra at attack, which is super, super good. Uh, yeah. The Hussars, A plus tier, they, they get cheaper scouts. Where do I have it? 15% cheaper scouts. So that's, it's really good. Um, yeah, Paladins, fully upgraded, nothing to really say there. Siege, we've got Siege Engineers, so it's decent. Nothing special about the Monks. The Magyar Hussar, so this unit, you can get Kravinian Army which makes it so they only cost food. So they're basically, like, stronger Hussars. And Hussars are already a strong unit. And, oh, yeah, also they have a bonus against Siege, so Rams are not going to do anything. Yeah. Magyar Hussars are crazy, crazy good in the super late game. So, yeah, they, they definitely deserve an S tier there. Malay. Ah, one, one of my favorite civs. I like this civ. They advance to the next age 80% faster. So, basically, it, it's like you get two extra villagers once you reach Feudal Age. Now, they don't have two-handed sword, or they don't have champions, but they have food-only two-handed swords. So, like the Magyars, they have a unique unit, kind of, that is no gold, which helps so much in the late game. Especially because the champion line is just, that they just kill all other trash units. Well, they aren't a trash unit, although Malay technically is a trash unit because it doesn't cause gold. But yeah, it, it eats up like every trash. So that's it's great in the late game. Fully upgraded Arbalists, fully upgraded Elite Skirmishers. But yeah, their cavalry is uh, kind of the worst in the game, arguably. They don't have bloodlines and they don't even have plus two armor. So they're just bad. They like don't go for melee or, um, cavalry units. Except for their elephants are okay. Because, you know, minus 20 HP on a unit that's this tanky, it doesn't really matter. Um... The minus or the not having plus two is offset by the fact that their battle elephants are 30% cheaper, so you can actually afford them and they still do the same damage output, like they're still decent. They they just died everything, which elephants already died everything, so it's, it's kind of fine. Um, even in the late game, like if you can afford to just spam these things if your opponent doesn't have an answer, so especially because they won't affect or they. They won't actually expect it sometimes because, yeah, well, why would you ever build cavalry with melee? So anyways, we got Siege Engineers, pretty good Siege Workshop, with access to Bombard Cannon, which is great. Monks, they're decent. They they don't really lack anything important other than Fervor, but it's it's fine. Karambits, again, it's like, it's super situational. It's just going to be a B plus. Like, I, I don't really know where to put it. It's not something that you really go for. You can if you want, but it's, it's not crazy good. Okay, Malians. So, we've got the Champ Scarls. Oh, yeah. So, they get extra Pierce Armor throughout the ages on their infantry line, which is huge. Uh, the reason I gave them a plus in Dark Age is that they construct all buildings at a 15% wood discount. So, they can just get them out a little bit faster or a little bit easier. So that's that's really nice. The pikemen. So they again they construct the buildings a little bit faster, and then they have the extra pierce armor, which it, it kind of helps them in throughout the ages. Although if you're fighting archers with the pikemen, you're still gonna lose. Um, but then of course they don't have halberdier, so it's just gonna be B plus here. And also they they do lack the blast furnace upgrade, which is kind of bad. But it doesn't really hold back their champ scarls. The Arbalists, they are lacking Bracer, which 
kind of sucks. They can build fully upgraded Arbalest, but then they're lacking like the most important upgrade, which is Bracer. So that's going to be a B for me. It doesn't matter as much for the Skirmishers, because Skirmishers are more of a defensive unit against um, Archers. They get most of their damage from bonus damage. So it, it's fine here with the B+. The Heavy Cab Archers, yeah, they're, they're not very good without Bracer and without Parthian Tactics. But they're, I mean, they are fully upgraded in Castle Age if you did want to go for them. You don't have to invest too much. But they're, they're just kind of a bad unit, so whatever. The Cavalry. So Farimba gives all Cavalry plus 5 attack, and that is their Imperial Age tech. So that's going to come in later on. But once you get to the Imperial Age, the Malian Cavalry, super, super strong, especially the heavy um, the Camels. Because, uh, remember, they lack Halberdier. So they need some kind of anti-Cavalry unit, and that's going to be the Camel for them. For sure. Their siege, no siege engineers, so it's whatever. Oh, yeah, bombard cannon should be B rank then. Um, that's a mistake. I'll be changing that. Monks, they have everything except for illumination, which it's it's kind of good in the post or in the imperial age. So that's gonna be a B plus. They're fine. Gabetto, better than average. Um, they're not OP or anything. They're super glass cannony. They did just recently get a buff, so they might they might be considered A plus rank now, but we'll just have to see. Uh, yeah, and that's it for them. Okay, on to the Mayans. Oh yeah, the Mezzo civs they're all pretty good. So Mayans being the archer civilization, they they do get the really good archers, but they they do get an economic bonus in that they start with an extra villager. But they, they don't have the food, so basically they get Loom first. So that doesn't really kick in until you click up. Or w basically it kicks in when your opponent gets Loom. Then you become one villager ahead. Um, their resources last 15% longer, which really helps in the late game. When gold is running dry, like when your opponent's running into gold, you're still going to have gold with mines, which can help you secure um, the late game. Their 200 swordsmen, very, very bad. No supplies, but they have full upgrades otherwise. But yeah, they're they're very bad. <laughs> With no champion and no supplies, that's going to be a C+. Halbs are fine, though. They have full upgrades on Halbs. It's fine. S-rank Eagle Warriors, for sure. Having 100 hit points on Eagle Warriors is, like, if your opponent doesn't have a proper counter to the Eagle Warrior, they're just going to die. Like, if they have only archers, it's not going to work. <laughs> uh, yeah. Arbalists, yeah, they have the cheaper, cheaper arbs. Actually, maybe they should even be A plus in Feudal Age because they are cheaper in Feudal Age. It's only a 10% discount, but it's pretty good. And then they they get the Obsidian arrows as well. So maybe maybe they should be S tier actually. Mm, maybe I'll just make it A plus in Feudal Age. I think that's what I'll do. Okay, uh, fully upgraded skirmishers, no problem there. We do lack siege engineers, so the it's they're okay. Like they have the heavy scorp even, they have the siege ram, but they don't have siege engineers. It's a pretty good siege workshop. Monks are not great. They don't have redemption, they don't have illumination. Plumed archers are great. You can build them in Castle Age, and you'll want to be building them in Imperial Age. So A and S, or A plus and S. On to the Mongols. So they have the Hunt bonus in the Dark Age, which really helps with their early economy. So they can actually get up to the Feudal Age super, super quick. Like, you can do 16 Pop Scouts or something like that. Uh, your economy's not going to be very good. It's going to be very all-in. But yeah, you can get those first few Scouts out pretty, pretty quick. But then they don't really have an Eco bonus for the rest of the game. So it's just in the Dark Age. Their infantry lack supplies, so... It, it, they're okay, but they're not great. You, you can build them, but you probably don't want to be building them. Halberdier is fully upgraded. Nothing wrong with that. Um, their archers, yeah. So they lack the final armor upgrade. So it's just going to be B plus and B for these. Their cav archers are great, though. They have the 25% firing rate increase on the heavy cav archers. So they're fully upgraded, and then they also have that, which is great. But they do have the Mangadai from the castle. You'd rather have Mangadai, but if for some reason you don't have any castles, like no access to stone, you can get by with the Mongolian heavy cav archers. It's fine. 
the Hussars, so they get extra HP on the Hussars, which is super, super good. Um, this also applies to the Step Lancers, so that's really going to help them in the Castle Age for sure. Um, it helps the Hussars later on as well, but for the Step Lancers, missing the final armor upgrade is pretty bad. Like, you kind of don't really want them, because you want to be spending your gold on Mangadai. That's the idea. Whereas the Hussars, it doesn't really matter if you're lacking the upgrade, you just build more Hussars <laughs> if you need more Meat Shield, because that's basically what they are. And they still raid just as good, pretty much. Uh, yeah, you don't really want to go into Cavaliers with no final armor upgrade. And then the, the Heavy Camels, I mean, they get them. They're okay, they have fully upgraded halves, but, you know, if you want some mobility and you're up against a uh, really good Paladin Civ, you can go for them. It's not bad. But, of course, they cost a lot of gold. So if you're building Mangadai, it's going to be hard to afford the camels. Their siege. Okay, so it's super good. With drill, all siege workshop units move 50% faster. And just the being able to close the distance on castles and stuff like that before the enemy units actually kill your rams, S tier, for sure. It helps the other siege, but, you know, they're usually kind of hang out behind your army, so it doesn't really matter if these two units are as mobile, but they're still super, super good. Uh, okay, yeah, so I forgot to edit the monks for these guys. <laughs> they're, they're not a rank monks. They are actually, so missing redemption and sanctity. They have atonement. That's going to be a C plus, and then that's going to be a, they're missing illumination, yeah, that's, that's going to be a C. C plus and C. I, I'm going to change that. Because, yeah, I, I just missed it. I missed one field. Mangadai, they're kind of expensive in Castle Age to build. But in late game, yeah, they're, they're actually arguably the best unit in the game. So, there we go. And, yeah, okay. On to the Persians. Oh, th this is the Civ that I think that I've played the most, actually. Yeah. They used to be super, super strong because they used to have a Dark Age work rate bonus on their town centers, but now the bonus only applies to Feudal, Castle, and Imperial Age. This makes all Villagers and Technologies and Age Ups... Or wait, does it increase the Age Up? I think it does, yeah. Um, increases the town center work rate, so everything in the town center just goes faster. Which, you can imagine building villagers faster is a very good thing. They also start with the extra food and extra wood, which can make them have a pretty mighty fine instant drush. Um, but yeah, they're champions. Uh, yeah, they don't get champion, and they're the only Civ to not get two-handed swordsmen. So they're stuck with long swordsmen. Do not build this unit in Imperial Age. They're very bad. Despite having full blacksmith upgrades for them. But that's more for their halberdiers. <laughs> which are fully upgraded, which are decent. So their crossbowmen, they actually get a unique technology with Commander on. They only cost wood. So again, having access to another trash unit is super, super good. Even without Arbalist and Bracer, they're still going to be an A+, because they only cost wood. They're so good with Commander on. Obviously, don't build them without Commander on, uh, except for in Castle Age. They're, they're completely fine in Castle Age. Just don't build them out without Co Commander on in the Imperial Age. Fully up... Uh, wait. We're missing Bracer. Okay. Uh, this needs to be a B plus on the, in the range here for the Skirms. That's fine. I'll change that. The Heavy Cav Archers. Yeah. I mean, they have, they have the four techs here, but they are missing Bracer, which is pretty big. And then they don't have any other bonuses for them, so it's it's a B. Without Bracer, they're really not that useful. Hussars. Fully upgraded. Nothing wrong with them. The Persian Knights do an extra two damage to archers. That's, that's huge. So A plus for sure for both of the ages, because they have full upgrades on them as well. Super, super strong. Um, they get fully upgraded heavy cam camels as well. Nothing special about them, but fully upgraded. They don't have siege engineers, but they have siege ram and heavy scorp, so that's kind of, that's pretty good. And then they have bombard cannon too, which is nice. Their monks suck. Yeah, <laughs> they're just really bad. They get C plus in the final age because they do have block printing. So you know, there's got to be a situation where it could be good. 
<laughs> like against elephants or something. <laughs> I don't know. They have war elephants. Actually, C rank in Castle Age. It's so bad. B rank in Imp. Yes, if you get 40 of them and they're fully upgraded, they're, they can't be stopped really. But, well, not even 40. You need like 60 or 80. But, anyways. There, you're not going to get to that in 1v1 Arabia, because that's basically what this page is all about, 1v1 Arabia. Okay, on to the Portuguese. So, they also got a new buff. Technologies research 30% faster, and, and in addition to units costing 20% less gold. They're looking pretty good these days. So, um, researching 30% faster is like wheelbarrow. It usually costs you three villagers worth of TC idle time. Now it only costs two, so it, you basically get a villager ahead in in feudal age if when you're researching that. So that it's huge, actually. They don't have squires, which is they have these slow moving infantry, which it's only gonna be a B plus for me. They're fully upgraded otherwise, and they even have the gold discount, but it's not enough on the champions. The mobility, again, mobility is very important in this game. Gold discount on Arbalus. That's huge. They cost 45 gold normally, so they're saving 9 gold on them. Uh, that That's huge. That's really good. Uh, skirmishers. Fully upgraded. Nothing special. <laughs> Heavy Gav Archers. So, they're a very gold-intensive unit. They cost 60 gold each. So, it's going to be an A-plus in the Castle Age, because they get all the other upgrades, too. And then they drop down to C-plus, because they don't have Parthian Tactics, and they don't even have Heavy caviar cavalry archer so yeah they're they're bad but there's some potential in the castle age i think so they're hand cannoneers they get the 20 percent discount on them which is great they also get archibus which makes it so that they have a sort of ballistics effect to them so they they shoot moving targets which that, that really helps them a lot. Those two bonuses combined bring them up to S, tank, uh, S rank, for sure. The Portuguese stable, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah, there's there's not really anything too, too bad. They're lacking Hussar, so that's just going to be a B plus from me. But having the gold discount on the Cavalier and, and the Knights, it's really good, actually. Maybe I should actually up the Knight to A+. Plus. They're not really missing anything. And they just get the gold discount. Yeah, maybe I'm going to turn that into an A+. Because I think it's worth it. Especially if I'm going to give the Cavalier an A+, in Imperial Age. So, they have Siege Engineers. And they have 20% less gold units. That applies to the Siege as well. So, we, we are going to go with the A+, rank onagers for sure and say, same with the bombard cannons so with archibus they have access to the archibus which gives them sort of a ballistic like effect so you know when onagers are coming forward and you're trying to snipe them with the bombard cannons you, you basically don't even have to target fire in front of the onagers you, they just does it for you which it helps a lot cheaper monks is great they have access to everything except illuminations that does bring them down in the imperial age but in castle age Cheap monks, like that that's 20 gold discount per monk. That's that's so much. Oregon gun, it's a decent unit. It's not bad. Uh definitely has some real potential in Imperial Age. Cheaper trebuchets. That's saving 40 gold per trebuchet. That's it's so much. So yeah, A plus for that. Yeah. Okay. On to the Saracens. So they don't have any economic bonuses other than their market. So they can actually trade at a much better rate. So they can get more gold for selling 100 resources, and then they can buy resources for cheap. Which, it basically means that they can go really gold-heavy for their economy. So they can just mine gold and buy everything else if they want to, <laughs> for a while, anyways. And then the market starts to get a little bit expensive, but anyways. Fully upgraded infantry line. Um, they're just lacking Halverdier in the late game, which it's, it's pretty bad. You don't want to be building pikemen in the late game, but they have access to fully upgraded camels. We'll get there. We've got archer line that actually get a plus one attack versus buildings. 
uh, uh and then and the, oh yeah and then they get another plus one attack for their actual civ bonus so they, they end up doing a ton of damage to buildings that's all you need to know they can shred through palisade walls easily and they're fully upgraded otherwise skirmishers fully upgraded fully upgraded cav archers as well not bad even in the late game they could be good if the cav archer was a good unit they would be building this for sure um okay so hussars full upgrades no problem they don't even get cavalier they're the only civ that get access to knight that doesn't have cavalier so yeah knights they start out decent they're fully upgraded in castle age but then in him they kind of suck heavy cav or heavy camel riders so same in castle age they're fine but then in the imperial age they have zealotry which give them plus 30 hp so they have a really good option for anti-cavalry in the late game but of course they do cost a lot of gold so you'll have to be spending your gold here and if you're going arbalist it's kind of hard to afford the camels but you try and make it work we have siege engineers so pretty good siege workshop just lacking the heavy score a plus monks so they actually have this um what is it called mud madras madrash something like that anyways that's this tech it makes it so that their monks return 33 gold when they're killed which is it's kind of nice actually if you're building a lot of monks and then they have a full monastery so that's it's pretty good it's got to be an a plus mamelukes or mimelukes as some people call it they're very gold intensive and they get countered by a lot of different units so they're they're just a solid b i mean you can use them in certain situations but they're probably not something you go for uh, yeah okay on to the spanish oh yeah we got the s rank in imperial age you guys know why they get access to the supremacy tech which makes their villagers super super strong they get 80 hp a bunch of attack and armor they also have access to the sappers technology so you, you can just really use this as your siege unit in the late game you just build like 40 extra villagers or something and just send them in <laughs> it can work uh okay they have a full blacksmith so that means they're gonna have fully upgraded champs fully upgraded halberdiers no problems there they do have a problem however with their archers they don't have crossbowmen so they're just garbage like they have thumb rings so you know they, they get a c plus in castle age if you for some reason open with archers like against men at arms and you know you can get your upgrades you could technically get thumb rings probably not worth it but you can get bodkin on them like they're they're not quite c rank in castle age is what i'm trying to say but they are garbage in M. okay skirmishers are fine though <laughs> like they get full upgrades on them so whatever heavy cav archers were missing parthian and hand cannons well they get the full armor upgrades so no problem there the hussars yeah so full upgrades nothing special though and the paladins nothing special full upgrades oh yeah i forgot to mention that spanish build, villagers build faster as well it's not enough to give them an extra rank here but they're it, it does help in a lot of situations especially getting up castles so we don't have siege engineers but a, an okay siege workshop the monks the monks are insane so we also have access to the missionary we have the uh inquisition tech which makes monks um convert even faster so monks already are annoying spanish monks are even more annoying especially the missionary which can get fervor they can also get husbandry and bloodlines because they're on a the donkey which is a, a horse i guess <laughs> and so they can be speedy boys and they can also just convert super quick so yeah not even bad they get the elite conquistador well regular conquistador in castle age is insane like this this unit used to be so busted and now they they get countered by skirmishers but yeah they're they're so strong they do drop off a bit in the late game because they they kind of fire slowly compared to other cavalry archer type units but they're super strong in castle age so yeah 
Um, I gave them an A plus for the keeps because they have full upgrades on them, and then they also build them faster. So that that's got to be worth something. And then same with the defenses, like building faster and then having upgrade or having access to architecture and hoardings. Super super good. Okay, on to the Slavs. So their farmers work faster. It doesn't really matter in the Dark Age because you don't really have farms there, but it, it starts to get really strong. They have really good champions because they have access to the Drazina tech, which makes them do a sort of splash damage, kind of like War Elephants. Just around, like when they attack, they just kind of attack around them. They do a little spinny attack. Um, yeah, full upgrades, S rank for sure. And that applies to the Halves as well. So just really good. They also get supplies for free. So, oh, I made a little spelling mistake there. So I'll be fixing that. Um, yeah, so in Castle Age, they could go for long swords, And with the free supplies, sometimes it, it could be good. Very rarely, but, you know, sometimes you can make it work. Um, oh, yeah, this is because they also have the Siege Workshop discount, 15%. So you can, you can basically make any of the siege units with the long swords so you could go for like long sword and mangonel or something like that anyways let's not get too into the crazy strategies crossbowmen we're lacking bracer so and and thumb ring so they, they kind of start to get really bad as the game progresses fully upgraded wait yeah, no, no, no. We, we don't have um, bracers, so yeah, they, they're just B-rank and imp. Pretty bad heavy cab archers, like usual. They're Hussars, A+, plus for sure. Um, having the faster farmers in late game allows you to just get so much more. Like, it, it's just really, really, really good. The Cavalier, nothing really special for the Cavalier, though. They're, they're fine. You can build them if you need that kind of unit, heavy cavalry, but you don't have to go for them. Because they, they'd rather have champions anyways in the late game, but sometimes you just gotta go cavalier. Sometimes you just make a bunch of knights, you gotta go cavalier in imp. And again, yeah, siege, super strong with that discount. It's amazing. They get a technology for their monks that give them more armor. It's not really huge. Like, it gives them plus three armor, but it's okay i mean it's enough to push them to a plus because they get all the text other than heresy but yeah it's it's not like amazing so the boy are it's kind of like a mounted teutonic knight you would think that that would make it really good but it's kind of expensive and like it's good but you'd rather have the drazina champions most of the time in imperial age so it's just gonna be a b and then an a rank All right, on to the Tatars. So, Tatar Tatars collect 50% more food from herdable animals, which, so it's like, if they have a sheep that has 100 food, they actually can collect 150 food from it. So, it's like they have 400 to 450 extra food from the Dark Age. With the latest update, they now spawn two additional sheep in the Feudal Age and two more per new town center constructed, which that should really help with booming for them. So I think Tatars are going to become a pretty good sieve. Their infantry is garbage, <laughs> just like some sieves, <laughs> but theirs is particularly bad because they lack supplies and they don't even get plus two armor. So that's going to be a C rank from me. They're... You really don't want to go for infantry with this sieve. Like, they even get halberdiers, but mm, not having the plus two armor, it's pretty bad. So, they they just kind of die. But, you, I mean, you could technically build them sometimes. But they have access to heavy camel, which you'd rather build. Okay, so, in Castle Age, we got a weird thing going on here. They get free thumb ring, so it actually makes their early Castle Age crosswoman really, really strong. But then they don't have Arbalist, so they go they go down to a B rank. Skirmishers, fully upgraded, no problems there. They have really good heavy cav archers, though. So they have A plus in the Castle Age, and this is due to the Silk Armor technology, which they can pick up from the castle, giving them a little bit of extra armor on them. They also have the 
damage increase from attacking from a higher elevation, which really helps with range units, and then also the free thumb ring. So all that combined, A plus for sure in Castle Age, and definitely an S rank in the Final Age. Uh, yeah, usually you'd get fit, uh, Silk Armor, maybe maybe on the way up to him, but yeah, having free Parthian tactics as well, they're just S rank. Like they're they're super super strong. Okay, so they're Hussars. Why do we get A plus rank here? That's because... Oh yeah, um, the Silk Armor affects the Hussar line as well. It's got a Cavalry line, which really, really helps in the final age. Nothing special about the Cavaliers, but nothing wrong with them either. Heavy Cam Archers, same thing. They're, they're fine. Fully upgraded. Nothing special. The Step Lancer is also affected by the Silk Armor. So that's why they get A+. Plus. They're just, they're pretty good. And of course, all of their units are affected by the elevation bonus. They're, if you can fight near a hill, you're always going to be doing a little bit more damage with Tatar units. So they're all sort of buffed. They have Siege Engineers and uh, just a solid Siege Workshop. So A's across the board there. Nothing special about their Monastery. They're missing Redemption, which sucks. Uh, the Keshik. So this unit has undergone a lot of changes, and they only cost 50 food and 40 gold right now, which is pretty cheap. It's only 90 resources, so it's only a little bit more than the Hussar, or the Scout line. And they train pretty quickly, too. So I, I think that they're a solid A rank. Like, they're not, they're not amazing, but they're really good, actually. Maybe that could even be, like, an A+, plus, but... Tataris just aren't really chosen as much. Like, they're not a really popular civ, so I don't really have as much data to ba base my um, assessment here on. We've got Timurid Siegecraft, which gives us an extra plus two range on the trebuchets. So these things do 19 range once they're fully upgraded. That's that's crazy. Like, nothing can touch these things. <laughs> they, they fire from so far away. Uh, so that's going to be S tier for them. Uh, we've got the memeing uh, camel right here. Uh, that's the only F tier that I've given, because, you know, give me a meme unit, I give you a meme rating. And that that's available after you get this very expensive uh, Timurid Receive Craft. <laughs> and then it's kind of underwhelming unit, so anyways. It's there. On to the Teutons. So their farms are discounted by 40%. Which, that's a huge bonus, actually. Uh, I didn't really give them a rank for that, but it really helps a lot. Maybe you could consider that to be A plus tier, but I think I can just keep it at A tier. It's, it's fine. They get extra armor on their infantry, so... Basically, where do I have it here? Yeah, receive one extra melee armor in Castle and Imperial, so that's plus two by the end of it. So, with a fully upgraded um, infantry line here, we're going to be A-plus in the late game. But nothing special early on, other than the farm bonus. They're crossbowmen. So, they're okay, they're lacking thumb ring. Uh, they're, ah, they're not even that good. But they, like, in Castle Age, you, you could go into crossbowmen in early Castle Age, but... You generally don't want to play the game like that, but you can. Skirmishers, we're lacking Bracer. It's going to be a B plus. And yeah, Cav Archers are garbage. They are actual, just so bad. Not even heavy Cav Archers, and yeah, they're just bad. The Scout line. So, they're the only Civ that gets Scouts, but no Light Cavalry. But they get the extra armor on them. And if you didn't know, well... Normally, Scout Cavalry move faster than Light Cavalry, but Teutons, they don't have husbandry, so it doesn't really doesn't really affect them here. But anyways, the, the Scouts, they still can raid in the late game. They're still not absolutely the worst, so they're going to still be a B rank. Um, Teuton Paladin, on the other hand, of course, they're lacking husbandry, but they get the extra melee armor, so that kind of counteracts that. And then... With the plus two melee armor, they've got to be an A plus here. It's pretty strong when fighting, um, like say other paladins, 
in the uh, late stage of the game. So, the siege units, they're actually decent. Now, the reason for that is because they have this ironclad tech, which gives them an extra four melee armor, which makes it so that, especially for your onagers, when um, it's going to make them resistant to hussars coming in and picking them off. So it'll give your halberdiers some time to kill the hussars, and then you can repair up your siege. So, yeah, having the extra melee armor really, really helps out, especially the siege onager. But, of course, it helps the rams as well. It, it just helps them all. It's it's just really good to get at some point. They do have crenellations for their castles as well, but generally you don't really want that. It, it just gives it extra range on castles, and it's it's kind of expensive, though. You'd rather just build another castle, because it does cost stone. Uh, Tootin Monks. So they have double the healing range, so I had to up them for that. They have full monastery and then this extra double healing range. Really nice. Really nice monastery. Teutonic Knight, uh, it's kind of bad. Uh, they move really slowly and they're melee. Just generally units that are like that are pretty, pretty bad. They're great at what they do, though. They're great against pretty much any other infantry unit, but they aren't really good against anything else and those infantry units that they're good against are just going to run away because they're faster so yeah that's <laughs> it's gonna be a b rank from me it's the reason why we have a plus in feudal age and castle age for the keep is that Teutons can actually garrison extra units inside towers what um they can garrison twice as many units so, in the early game, defending Tower Rush, you just build a tower and then you can garrison extra villagers to fire extra arrows. And you'll just win the Tower Rush every time. So, it, they're really good. And then, I mean, in the late game, you're not going to be really playing like that. So, it doesn't really matter. But they do get full upgrades on their keeps. So, no problem there. Yeah. Okay, on to the Turks. So, Turks just got a big update. I, I bet this is going to get nerfed, but uh, as of right now, they get one extra pierce armor on the scout line. This is even in the feudal age, so uh, they're A+, plus, maybe even S tier in feudal age now. <laughs> just having that pierce armor for free, you can just run under the enemy TC and it can't even do anything to you in feudal age. So, well, I mean, it does do some damage, but it's, it's pretty good. It, well, it's amazing. But anyways, they also get the Light Cavalry and Hussar upgrades for free, which is why they're A+. Um, they, they do have faster working gold miners, but I don't think it's enough to give them A+. Maybe it is, but they're either A or A+. Like, we'll keep it at that. They get fully upgraded champions, nothing wrong there, but then they are the only Civ in the game that doesn't have access to pikemen. And they're the only Civ in the game that doesn't have access to skirmishers either, or elite skirmishers, sorry. So, they are pretty bad uh, with their trash units, other than the Hussar, which is just so good. So, they, they it's like they took all of the stats from the Skirmisher and, and um, Spearman and put it into the Hussar. That's, that's basically how the Turks are. Their crossbowmen, completely fine. They just don't have Arbalists, so you don't want to have them in the late game. The Heavy Cav Archer, actually some of the best Heavy Cav Archers in the game. Full upgrades in Castle Age, and then they get the Sip Sipahi tech, which gives them an extra um, 20 hit points. So it's like they have bloodlines twice, which just having these super tanky heavy cav archers, if you've ever gone up against Turkish heavy cav archers in the late game, they are they feel broken. Like, they're so strong. Um, even if you have fully upgraded skirmishers against them, it's like you, you just can't even kill them. <laughs> so that along with the super strong Hussars, it's going to get really tough against Turks. Um, okay, so the Hand Cannoneers, they get, well, chemistry doesn't affect them, but their gunpowder units have 25% more hit points and are created 20% faster. So, that's going to be S tier. Like, you can get them out super quickly, and they're a little bit tankier. Really nice. So, Hussars, I already talked about that. Nothing wrong with their Cavalier, but, yeah, they have other options <laughs> that you would normally go for. You need Camels against... Um, enemies who are going for knights, or well, you can you can build Chinna series, but still, the camel is a good option to have. But there's nothing special with them. 
Now, we don't have siege engineers, and we don't even have onagers, so their siege workshop, eh, it's okay. Like, they get the rams, but it's not great. The scorpions can help too, but it's not great. Um, other than the bombard cannon, because the bombard cannon also has the extra HP, and is created faster, and since they get chemistry for free, they, they can instantly produce them. So that's the same with hand cannon here. Um, they can produce them from the start of imp, instead of having to wait for chemistry and research. So that's that's nice. The monks, nothing nothing too crazy about them. Um, did they have? No, they don't. They don't really have a bonus for them either. Wait, why did I say A rank? They're lacking block printing in the late game. Oh, I guess their gold miners work faster. No, 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 I wouldn't have factored that in. Okay, they're they're gonna be a B plus in the. No, they're gonna be a B in imp because block printing and illumination are pretty important. So I'm gonna change that. The Janissary. Yeah, it's a strong unit. If you can build them, it's a pretty strong unit to go for. They don't really have any mobility, but they, like, having 8 range, anything with 8 range in Castle Age is super, super strong. And then in the Imperial Age, just having, um, having that damage output allows them to kill everything. Like, if you get enough Janissaries, you can kill Paladins with them in one shot easily. So, it's a good unit. All right, on to the Vietnamese. We're almost there. So, their economic co upgrades cost no wood. Uh, it's it's good, but it's not overpowered or anything like that. It's just, it doesn't increase the rank of the villagers, really. It's just nice to have. They get... They're lacking just Blast Furnace. So they basically get serviceable champions. Like, especially if you're against Eagle Warriors... It's still good to build the champion line with Vietnamese. Halberdiers, fully upgraded. So, we've got 20% more hit points on the archery range units. So that's all of them, including the heavy cab archer. So that's going to bring us to A+, just across the board here. Fully upgraded. Um, we have access to the Imperial Skirmisher. So in the late game, we just get a little bit of extra armor and a little bit of extra attack. Well, one extra armor, one extra attack, which is, it's good. It's good to have, because they are still a trash unit. Or uh, non-gold unit, basically. The heavy cav archers, yeah, just having the extra HP, it, it helps them. So that's why I increased the rank here. But then they lack Parthian tactics, so yeah, they're not really great to go for in the late game. The light cavalry. So we are lacking just Blast Furnace. It's not bad. Not, not bad. But they're still going to be B because of that. It's still not great to lack that upgrade. The Cavalier, yeah, they're still fine. Again, just lacking Blast Furnace. Uh, I should... Um, hmm. Maybe it's more of like a, a B, though. Ah, uh, no, they still have the Pierce Armor, which is more important. Uh, maybe I'll up the Light Cav to a B+, plus, actually. Because it's not, it's not as important. Although I guess nah in the in the trash wars it's it's more important because cavalier you don't build once it gets to be post imp, so I'm thinking more in earlier imp where you're you're fighting gold units and stuff like that. Whereas in the super super late game, if you're fighting trash units, you do want to have the extra attack. Uh, okay, yeah, no, no, these rankings are fine. The battle elephants they have the extra HP on them. Where do I put it here? Maybe I don't even mention it because it's not even that important. Yeah, so they get the ch uh, Chatros. That's what it's called. It gives them plus 50 HP on the Battle Elephants. So they're just going to be A-ranked. Like, they're not as good as some, but they're they're fine. They still have good upgrades. Missing Blast Furnace kind of sucks, but they make up with it. Or they make up for it with the extra HP. We've got Siege Engineers. It's great, but no Heavy Score. Wait, no Heavy we have Siege Engineers. Okay, uh... Uh, wait a sec. Oh, I, I, I ranked these like they didn't have Siege Engineers. Except for the Cap Rem. Okay, so I messed this up. So this should be an A rank. This should be a B rank. I'll change that. Oh yeah, and they should be A rank. I, I must have re did not realize that they had Siege Engineers. Whoops. We'll change that. Nothing special with their monks. They've got the Rattan Archers, so they can be good in Castle Age. You can go for them, but you do have to get a, a castle, and, I mean, you can get by with just crossbowmen, so. 
But then in the late game, you definitely want this. Basically, the Rattan Archer, it uh, the Elite has base 6 Pierce Armor, so it's kind of like a Skirmisher, but also an Archer. So you can imagine how that goes. It's super, super strong. All right. And last but not least, we got the Vikings. S rank in Feudal and Castle Age, for sure. We've got Wheelbarrow and Handcart for free. This gives them, uh, like, it gives them it from the start, and they also don't need to use TC idle time to build it, so that's more villagers there. And then also they don't need to spend money on it. So it's, it's huge. It's a huge bonus in Feudal and Castle Age, and it even sort of leeches into the Imperial Age, because a lot of people won't even have a Handcart when they click up to Imperial Age. So it's it's so strong. <laughs> um, their champion line, they get extra HP. Actually, this is on all infantry. They get extra HP, so that's going to be A plus A plus, and then they get access to the chieftain's tech, which gives them extra damage against cavalry. Which they've got S rank champions for sure. They lack halberdiers, so they're just an A rank for the pikeman line in Imp. Even with the Chieftain's tech, it's not as good as having Halberdiers. And, and with the HP, it's still just how you'd rather have Halberdiers. <laughs> uh, but they're really great throughout the game. They have fully upgraded uh, Arbalists and Skirmishers. Nothing really wrong with that. Their Cav Archers are garbage, just like most Civs. Their Light Cav Oh, or, sorry. Basically, their entire stable sucks as well, because they don't have bloodlines, and they don't have husbandry. And they don't even have plate barding armor, so yeah. If you're building stable units as Viking, it's just because of their good economy. Like, you could open knights, because they are, they have the armor on them, and you could afford a lot of knights. They're just not going to be very good. So, I had actually come up with a strategy to, to build a few knights, as Vikings, just to get like a castle drop forward and then go from there. And it can work, but yeah, you don't want to be on knights for very long. Their siege is really good. Like they have siege engineers and then they have siege ram and then onager and then heavy scorps. So yeah, awesome siege workshop. Nothing special though. Monks, monks are pretty bad. Nothing more to say about that. Berserks, you definitely don't want to be opening with them, but they can be really good in the late game. Um, uh, maybe even S tier. I, I left them at A plus here, but they, there's an argument to be made to make them S tier because they move faster than champions. They also regenerate health, uh, and they do a lot of damage to cavalry as well. So they, they basically kill, um, infantry, like other infantry, and then also cavalry. So they're really great to have, but of course you need castles to build. And yeah, that's basically it we got through the whole list i don't think there's anything yeah there's not really anything to say here more uh wow this has been a long video well um yeah you can go to aoe2detools.herokuapp.com slash civ ranking and you can see this for yourself oh yeah i forgot did i ever mention this is all printable by the way so look at look at how it looks printing you have to have the you want to have color i mean if if your system or if your printer doesn't have color you, know, you can go black and white it's it's fine but it doesn't look as nice see we go color you go color it's really really nice um paper size gotta be a4 if it's if it's the default letter it, see it it kind of leeches into the next page we you have to do a4 size paper and then it's perfect. I, I made sure that all the sieves fit. And I've got some, uh, like I'm programmatically making the text a little bit smaller on this side and making the images a little bit smaller just to fit for some things. Uh, but yeah. Oh yeah, and you also want background graphics. If you don't have background graphics, it will not show the gold and the red. So yeah, it, it looks a lot nicer like this. So there we go. Um, I'm going to have a PDF of all 35 sieves and the explanation. So if you wanted to just mass print them, if that's your thing, then that'll be in my Discord. So visit the Discord. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, this has been a very, very long video. I've been talking for like two hours straight. So, well, I hope to see you on my stream or in the Discord. All right, thanks, bye-bye.